I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much. I'm fully known and loved by you. You will not let go, no matter what I do. And it's not one or the other. It's hard truth and ridiculous grace to be known, fully known, and loved by you. Hey y'all, welcome back to my vlog. It's Sammy. Just kidding. That's not what I sound like. Um, okay, now we're getting a little awkward. Okay guys, let's give a little, um, backstory to this video. So, for my birthday this year, I turned 18 in April. I got this book by Sadie Robertson because I asked for one of her books and it's called Live. And we're just gonna kind of dive into it. There's just, I made a lot of notes about it that I want to share with you guys. And then like there's this one message that I really want to share. But yeah, before we start off though, I do, first of all, I recommend the book. And also I did a little Instagram post about the book. So you can go check that out at Sammy Morita. And then I also post a lot of content about God and messages and Bible studies and stuff like that on my TikTok, Sammy Marita. So just a little shout out if you want to go look at those for more Christian content because I'm trying to post more stuff like this. And this is literally just like chill. Like we're just hanging out. I'm just sitting in bed and I'm just going to talk and I'm really excited. Now let's get into the video. These are all quotes and concepts and everything from her book, so no copyright. I'm embracing this book and telling you all to go read it, and I'm just kind of sharing some stuff I learned from it. Okay, so first, a little definition and background. So literally, it has on the cover the definition of live, and it is to remain alive, to be alive at a specified time, to have an exciting or fulfilling life. And I honestly love that because um, I love how it's like, be alive at a specified time, to remain alive, all that. Because you were made exactly for this moment. Not just yesterday, not just tomorrow, but today, right now. I want to read this little portion of the book. It says, I know this book will land in the hands of many people who have had plans, who have written letters, and who are struggling through depression, and because of the anxiety and loneliness, have not talked to anyone about this. Please do not wait until it is too late. Go talk to someone right now. A friend, a counselor, a minister at church, or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at... I'm going to put the number right here for the, national, for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. For you, if you need that, please call or if you know anyone who does. Okay, so if you're reading this book, if you're watching this video, you are alive. You just are. You may not feel like you're truly living though, so this is for you. This is for all of us who really need this message we didn't get to decide but we are here and we're living so let's actually fully live and truly live and for me um god is that but let's get into just what i have to say i guess i don't know let's get into my notes god has many many promises that he tells us and that he has for us and god is definitely a promise keeper and um, I feel like a lot of times we don't remember, we don't exactly know what the promises of God is because we think like, oh, like I really want this, but like you didn't give it to me. Well, God didn't exactly promise that, but he does promise many things like the fruits of the spirit, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, stuff like that. And um, God promises to show up if you will trust him. So there you go. Sometimes when we are trying to live our lives fully, we go wrong by turning to quick temporary highs. We try to satisfy ourselves through things that will leave us high and dry instead of simply filling our lives with the promises of God, which are guaranteed. So it kind of has to do with the promises I said, but also I think many of those things that will leave us high and dry that people will give into is drinking, smoking, relationships, um, social media, shows, just like entertainment, technology, video games. Um, I think anything like that, I think we kind of depend on those things we get temporary highs off of those things many more um the like button promises that someone told you in a relationship one thing is that we are human so um we don't even always when we make a promise we don't even always mean for it to fall through but we are human so it does sometimes but with god that is not possible he keeps all of his promises and with things of this world God's telling us that those things are going to leave us high and dry. They are not going to fulfill you. Only God can. So take that as it is. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Another one of his promises. A big thing is when people 
are like, okay, I want to live for God. I want to try out this God thing. Um, I really want to turn away from my sinful nature, from these things of this world. But how do I do that? You simply turn in God's direction, which is towards life. You turn away from what's causing you to sin, what's causing you to feel dead inside, and you turn towards God. And Jesus literally said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Like, he is just life. And Jesus is always an option. You can choose life through him. He's always an option. Doesn't matter what you've done, where you're currently at. If you're currently in the worst things you've ever done, in the worst situation, it doesn't matter. Jesus was born as the lowest. He's a king, but he was literally the lowest of the low on this earth. And he ate, was friends with, hung out with sinners, with tax collectors that you're probably like what those were like the lowest of lows he hung out with people who were had diseases and were shunned and nobody talked to nobody went around they weren't even supposed to be around any like people that's who jesus hung out with a little backtracking to what i was saying before about the temporary highs a little pain relief does not equal real life when your life is on the line physically you're not gonna grab an advil you're just not so when you're like looking for real life you're not going to grab a temporary pain relief and i think one thing that can help that is really live in the moment there's so much freedom to living in the moment to not worrying what's ahead god says in the bible he says do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself um every day today has enough worry for its own Sorry if I didn't say that exactly right. A big thing, especially in my life that I've experienced, and of course for all of us humans, um, a big thing that keeps us from living our full life and all that God has for us, I think, is really um, when there's negativity and bad things and haters and all these things um, that we get, have to experience, that we have to experience in our lives, we really latch onto that negativity and like it brews inside of us, it brews in our hearts and our thoughts and i think that's one of them a big reason that keeps us from living life in the story of peter he experienced jealousy but what jesus said to do and what he actually did himself as well was shake the dirt off your feet and walk on with joy knowing the holy spirit is with you and that you did all that you could with the best intentions so just keep going um when jesus said this he was like telling his um, disciples to preach all around, to go to other towns and stuff and talk, tell them the good news of Jesus. And he's like, if people don't accept it, if they don't listen, just shake the dust off and go to the next town. And I think that's really how we should be. Um, I think that really speaks with haters, jealousy, negativity, anything. Just really shake it all off. Go listen to some Taylor Swift, shake it off, and just shake it off. Um, that's really all we can do. We can't... The worst thing you can do is keeping those thoughts in your mind. Um adding on to it keeping it in your heart um keeping that hatred and stuff you really you have to forgive you have to not have hate you have to really just ask jesus to fill you fill you with patience and love and forgiveness and all that a big thing for me is i can not gossip it is i mean we're not called to and i can see why because it is so consuming and it keeps those feelings and those thoughts in you um me and my family have learned We'll bring up negative stuff, and then we're like, no, we can't talk about that. Because, like, it is so negative. Our words, like I said, it brings life or it brings death. And um, so I've also learned, like, I cannot always just go ranting to people. I cannot just go ranting to friends. I have to really rant to God, talk to God, pray about it. He says, cast your burdens onto him. So really do that. And, I mean, sometimes I will. I'll be like, yeah, you know, I am walking through this. And it does help. And then being like, hey, can you pray for this? And that really helps. So doing that as well. Um, sometimes I talk to my mom, stuff like that, and just really, like it said, deal with the pain so you can enjoy the good things that God is doing. God has placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. Mic drop! Haters. When we hear block out the haters, shake it off, haters gonna hate, hashtag haters are my motivators. We hear all type of stuff. Um, but I feel like when we experience it, it's a little more hits home. It's a little more true. It's a little more 
you know, real. And I've definitely experienced hate, and not even exactly a hater. Nope, I've experienced haters, let's just say it. And we're going to try to kind of talk about that. And in Sadie's book, she really explains the strategies of haters. So we can know what their strategy is and how we can rise above it and fight against it. Okay, so haters' strategies. Haters will try to make you question what you're doing. So they're going to be like, are you doing the right thing? Be like, is that actually what God calls you to do? Why would he call you to do that? You're not in the right place. Are you actually your happiest? Are you happy when you're not doing this? Are you happy when you spend your time doing this? Whatever. They will belittle you. Make you feel less than. They try to take out leaders. A hater or anyone is not going to take out the lowest of lows. They're not going to take out someone who is not a threat, who is a follower, who's just not getting anything done they're not gonna like what's the point haters are very persistent haters overcome their insecurity by bringing you down but really they're not overcoming it but they try to overcome their insecurity by bringing you down yes haters are insecure and that is why they are hating now a lot of this is kind of like what the enemy strategies is and i would agree but we can come back to the we have a we have a come we have comeback strategies for the haters. Be confident in what you're doing. Now, confidence does not come from you or how you look or anything that you have, but all God. And God is the most powerful. God is beautiful, strong. He, When we are weak, he makes us strong. So we can have complete confidence in God. And never forget where your confidence comes from. Like I just said, God. Keep working with all your heart. Your work is not for the haters, though, but it's for God. So just keep working with all your heart. Sometimes you have to decline the invitation. They invite you. They try to get you to argue. Invite you to be in their friend group, even though they literally are so rude to you. Sometimes you have to decline the invitation. A lot of times, if it's a hater, you have to decline the invitation. And like I said, they will be persistent, but you have to decline the invitation. When you're walking with God, our whole life is a great project. So just stay focused on that. You have something. You have a purpose. You actually have something you're working on. Even if you're in a waiting season, even if you're not sure, then you get to also pray. We can seek God. We can lay the haters at his feet. God says the battle is his, so give it to him. Don't try fighting the haters. chapter from Sadie's book is called boom roasted and as soon as i read it i was like i have to share this i have to make this a youtube video there's one thing you can be sure of you will not do everything right at some point you'll have an epic fail or you'll at least make a mistake or do something others think is funny or stupid or weird people will notice and some of them will not let you forget it it may even be on social media where the whole world could have access to it if you do anything that involves other people in any capacity, you risk being roasted. I put quotations around risk because it's not just a possibility, it's more of a fact. There will be times all of us will be picked on or made fun of. I say that not to be a downer, but to say this. Do not let the fear of being roasted stop you from doing something you are excited about doing. People roast people. It happens to me all the time. There are YouTube videos out there with hundreds of thousands of views of me being roasted and verbally picked apart. There are hundreds of comments saying that I sound annoying when I talk. Do those things hurt me? Sure. Because I'm human and sometimes the comments sting. But I do not let those sting stop me from doing what I love to do and from using my voice in the spaces where God opens doors for me to speak. You don't have to let the fear of being roasted stop you either. You don't want to be silenced because a group of people who are choosing to focus on your mistakes or point out qualities that are not your best when you could be saying something that could change someone's life and affect, and affect eternity. So if you have a desire in your heart to do something but you're afraid you'll be roasted, I say do it anyway. If negative comments come, then they come. But don't let that stop you from doing what makes you, you. And certainly don't let it quiet your voice. Boom, go for it. Don't let negative comments stop you from doing what makes you, you. 
Yay! Sadie also has a chapter called From Liked to Love, and she also goes into that in some sermons and some different things. And in a podcast that I heard her kind of talking about her book in, I'll try to remember to link it below. I'll try to remember to link some different stuff below. She talked about just the difference between being liked and being loved. I had a realization, I guess, and I kind of want to share that really quickly. The being liked, it's really superficial. Think about when you're getting likes on a post, when you're worrying about if a guy likes you, um, if you're trying to really make a friend, or not even a friend, but um, the popular people like you, whatever it is, it's more of a feeling. Like, you want to feel liked. And honestly, it's kind of addictive. You continue, you want... Like, you're wanting it so bad, you feel like you need it. Or, like, the mo like even if you get the likes, you still want more and all that. While being loved is different. When you think about being loved, it's not really, like, a feeling. Like, you don't have to really feel loved exactly. Like, if someone loves you. I think, honestly, when I think about someone loving me, I kind of think more about loving them back, if that makes sense. Love is something because God is love, so you get to really ask him to help you love. He tells you, there's a Bible verse, I'll put it up or whatever. Love is patient, love is kind. Like, we get to really know what love is, while like, it really is We get to rely on God to give us love, to fill us with love, um, to love ourselves. He loves us more than we can ask, think, or imagine. He loves you more in a moment than anyone could in a lifetime. He gives us love to pour out to others, to love on others. I'll show us exactly how to love on each person. Difficulties, whatever we face, whether it's haters or what, um, they make us stronger. And then they make our stories better. And then they give us a testimony um, to write a book, to make a video, to talk to a friend, whatever it is. But we get a testimony to share the goodness of God. So, thank you, haters. I enjoyed doing this so much. Go read her book. I'll try to put um, some links in the description for her stuff. I had a blast. I love reading the book, so go read the book. Let me know if I should do more stuff like this. I mean, actually, no, don't let me know because I'm probably going to anyways. So I'm going to go because I'm st standing in the sun and it's kind of hot. And my hair is down and everything, so I'm hot. So I'm going to go. I literally, my hair's dry. Before I got took the video, my hair is wet. Okay, whatever. Um, God bless. Bye. Hannah, say bye. I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much. Cannot find the reasons why you wait. I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much. Okay. What's that you say? Okay. Take some risks. Face plant. Laugh about it. That's in my notes. It's yeah, it's kind of funny, I guess. Please pause up. because we trust in God for our future. They're going to make you question what you are currently doing.